episode of uh, Riding Away with Dave, right here with uh, Professor Jason Box. And uh, Jason, you're going to be one of the featured uh, stars for our, and we haven't come up with a title yet for it, but what are we going to call this big uh, May 2nd event? Well, uh, maybe it should be called Climate Change, What We Know, okay. um, Skeptics, <laughs> and Denial, Den um, colon, a civil discussion a civil discussion or a civil debate right and i'll tell you what i'm really excited about the uh, prospects of having you uh, be in front of a live audience and having a chance to uh, debate the internet skeptic <laughs> robert wagner and stuff and you're looking forward to it and i actually think that he's you know in a little bit of a panic situation because i hear he's getting up early in the morning and he's having all those eggs and he's playing that rocky music and he's in well, training i feel confident because i convinced the facts are on my side Okay. And so I'm really just going to be talking about the facts, what we know. Okay. And I, as much as anyone, I think I, I want to share uh, a, an objective assessment of, of this, the, the so-called climate crisis. Um, so I'll be representing the science yes. of the issue okay. um, in this discussion. Okay. Uh, we've got a premier site right now. Uh, lined up. It will be May 2nd right here in Columbus, Ohio, and it's going to be a RSVP type of event, so uh, no charge to the public, but we do want people to sign up ahead of time so we have an idea whether we're going to have 300, 500, I think capacity 700, so I'll be making that announcement and posting it on my website, and uh, there'll be other people. So what do you think about uh, giving a live presentation in front of a bunch of uh, maybe hostile type of uh, audience and stuff? Well, it's a little unsettling to think that there might be some people in the audience that are hostile to the science of, okay. of climate change. Um, but I think it's worthwhile uh, for me to engage with the public. Yeah. I think um, many perceive that the, the debate hasn't happened or, or um, there are still questions. And um, it's very important to me to uh, try to answer questions and, and to the extent that the science can do that. Um, that's my job. Yeah, and uh, th that's something that we've talked about that a lot of times, and I, and I felt like there hasn't really been a public debate. And so I think you're really taking up the challenge to come out and just really from a, a perspective of, of, hey, you're just a citizen too, and you're concerned about all these important issues, but you're willing to come out there and, and hold the mantle up for the professional scientific community and, and get a message out there to people and, you know, let people make up their own mind once they hear a presentation from yourself and from a guy like Robert Wagner that's, you know, the direct opposite, <laughs> so to speak, mildly, right? Well, you know, I'd be very happy if uh, society could come together on this rather than being divided and always fighting about um, the politics of some issues. I, I, I would love to see um, some middle ground um, identified in this issue. So what we really want to do as a nation is to find a creative, a pragmatic uh, solution to uh, the environmental challenge that the, the climate change problem is facing us with. Um, so that that's my attitude, and, yeah. and um, I'm looking forward to it. And, and you've done some neat stuff uh, in the past. Why don't you give the audience a little bit of flavor of all the research you've done, the trips, uh, you know, to Greenland, because isn't that kind of like where, where you've got your, a lot of notoriety from and stuff? And I know you were just on, let the audience know about, you were just a big part of the, what, the NOVA presentation? Um, yeah, I've, I've had I've been interacting quite a bit with the media. We've um, we've been on BBC, uh, Discovery Channel, the Today Show, Nova, and my story is that um, I've been doing Arctic research. I've okay. been going to the the Greenland ice cap. Okay. I've spent more than one year, okay. uh, if you add it up, on the inland ice, just camping on ice oh, and wow. trying to stay warm. Uh, we've done very long distance. Um, traverses in snowmobiles. Um, we've fallen into crevasses for um, <laughs> and that. survived it. Um, and, you know, we fly around in helicopters and it's a very exotic place to go. Wow. Um, icebergs, mountains. Yeah. Um, Polar and, bears. And the re yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and the reason we're going there is to um, study the effects of climate on ice. As you know, um, if it's very warm, okay. ice melts, right. and so ice is a good indicator of okay. change. Okay. And so we're studying glaciers. Okay. And what's been your research, and what have you uh, determined from all the work that you've done and stuff? Well, I was I didn't think that going into it, um, 
there would be as as rapid of the changes as we we are observing. Oh, okay. So in just my short career, I've I've seen um, very big. In fact, like the world's most productive glaciers, okay, um, retreating, speeding up, okay. um, apparently reacting to the climate that has warmed a lot in the last decade plus. Okay. Um. So what what we've learned is it's a very sensitive system it's a sensitive indicator okay of change okay and no matter what's causing the change okay um the the ice is very uh useful indicator okay Pre pretty and so much. like what i'm doing or um, i mean we're installing and maintaining automatic uh climate measurements temp okay. temperature okay. um solar radiation um the most recent project very exciting uh, it's running time-lapse cameras and is we've got cameras taking photos every hour okay. throughout the year, and we're able to watch uh, yeah. the action, oh. and we don't have to camp out there the whole time because it's you know brutally cold in the winter. Oh yeah, I, what, what's the temperatures down to? Well, the minimum temperatures are minus fifty. Oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. About and uh, that. so we we go in the spring. Hey, I may kind of like global warming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We we go in the summer and yeah. it, it's not so cold. It's okay. just hovering around the melting point. Okay. And then, you know, from like May until June, it, it goes from cold okay. into melting abruptly. Okay. And that's really when the the action begins. Oh, okay. Once once you start to begin melt of of the sea ice and the glacier front, it just starts to it reacts. Oh wow. And um, and and so uh, it's it's a useful place to uh -huh. study climate change. Uh, we we should look for climate change first where the glaciers are okay so but so with your research over a number of years you're pretty much at the full conclusion that uh, the global warming the climate change it's absolutely real and the the research you've done has indicated you think that the man it's it's a man-made type of thing and uh, we've actually got to take some uh, big time steps to get a handle on it, whether it's the what the emissions from the the coal power plants and uh, big industry and stuff, uh, what's your conclusion, and what do you think has to be done? Well, I think I should first say that there are okay. many many factors influence okay. climate. Okay. Volcanoes influence climate. Um, um, the galactic dust can and solar output can influence climate. Okay. So the challenge to understanding climate is understanding how all of these factors play together in the observed temperatures. Okay. Well, humans, um, since the Industrial Revolution, have released incredible amounts of, of carbon into the atmosphere. We, okay. we have raised atmospheric carbon concentrations 40% wow. above pre-industrial levels. And if you know about the physics of, of carbon dioxide, it, it absorbs infrared radiation. Okay. So if we increase concentration of this heat-trapping gas, the climate system warms. It's that simple. And the, the scientific enterprise, it goes much beyond um, the physics of, of carbon dioxide and, and how it absorbs infrared radiation. Um, the, the science of climatology is, is, is vast. Uh, the, the challenge to the climate scientists is to understand this complex system and uh, how it may be changing. So in my almost 20 years now in this academic enterprise, um, um, the scientific method, you either accept or reject yeah. um, something. It's not a matter of belief. And from what I've seen, I accept the theory of, of global warming that, that humans have become a, a force for change in the climate. Okay. Um, and and ag arguably, the science um, shows that humans are the driving force right now. It's not solar output increases. Well, you know, May 2nd, that's going to be the showdown, and uh, you're going to be there live and in person. So uh, we'll go ahead and wrap this up for right now. Jason, time to ride the wave on out of here. And May 2nd, brother, it's on. Okay. Right, here, we here, we go. Go. here we go. There we go. <laughs> okay. The truth is on my side. <laughs> okay. <laughs>